How are doctors judged? Some of you might think that the moment you get into med school or even finished med school finals, that's it. Unfortunately, that's definitely not the case. Once we finish medical school and graduate as doctors, we are constantly tested and judged by other people. We're not just let loose without supervision. It can be a bit stressful. If you're a non-medic or a medical student on your way to becoming a doctor, you might be curious about how doctors are judged good enough to progress to the next stage of training. If that interests you, this is the video for you. I'm Dr. Mine, and I'm about to explain all the things expected of you as a newly graduated first year doctor and some of the challenges you'll face. The main way doctors in the UK are judged is by our e-portfolio or electronic portfolio, which we have to complete for our annual appraisal, the ARCP. Now, some of the specifics may change, but this video is a good indication of the standard that new doctors anywhere in the world would be held to. And it might be interesting for doctors elsewhere in the world and other healthcare professionals to compare what you have to achieve to this video. So here are the 10 steps of completing your e-portfolio as a new doctor. Let's get into it. Step 1. Familiarise yourself early. Ask your training programme directors and administrative team what's expected of you. Pay attention to your induction packs and introductory lectures. Look at your e-portfolio website, explore it, get to know it well. And remember to start everything early. Start looking for relevant opportunities and projects. More on this later. Step 2. Supervisor meetings. During foundation training in the UK, you go through four month rotations through different specialties to try everything out. Now, in each rotation, you have two different consultant supervisors. Your clinical supervisor is a consultant in that specialty who looks after you. Meanwhile, your educational supervisor looks after you through the entire year. You have to arrange meetings with both these consultants at the beginning and end of your four month placements. The basis of these meetings is your PDP or personal development plan. What do you hope to achieve during this rotation? What do you want to improve on? And by the end of the rotation, have you achieved your aims? Your supervisor then write up a report for the ePortfolio. Step 3. Supervised Learning Events or SLEs SLEs are the main basis of how you are assessed in the workplace. Basically, a senior clinician watches you do something or discusses something with you in detail and then gives you verbal and written feedback on what you've done well and what you can improve on. A CBD is a case-based discussion. It's a clinical case that you discuss in depth with your seniors. You talk about the history, examination, differential diagnosis, appropriate investigations, management plan, that kind of thing. A mini KEX is a mini clinical evaluation exercise where a senior watches you perform an examination on a patient and a DOPS is a direct observation of procedural skills, where a senior watches you perform a clinical skill like taking blood or putting in a nasogastric tube. Step 4. Reflections Now you have to write a reflection on each of the SLEs that you do, but there's a dedicated section for reflections as well. And this is for good reason. Reflective practice is super important. As a doctor, you come across a lot of challenging scenarios and a lot of learning opportunities. It's important to reflect on these so you don't just forget what happened. So you actually think actively about what's gone well and how you can improve next time. However, you have to be careful that you don't include patient sensitive or identifiable information in your reflections. Step 5. Involvement in teaching. As a doctor, it is vital to keep your knowledge up to date, so we have to attend mandatory teaching and optional teaching as well and log it on the ePortfolio. This might be in the form of lectures, seminars and workshops, online e-learning and courses, high fidelity simulation where we're in a simulation room and acting out emergency scenarios with a mannequin, and virtual reality simulation where we put on a VR headset and pretend that we're in a clinical emergency situation. The last two are very fun and very useful. But we also have to be involved in teaching others. This might be formal teaching like a case presentation, it might be running small group teaching or workshops, it might be online teaching, or it could be informal teaching on the wards, showing medical students what they have to do on a day-to-day -day basis when they become doctors. Step 6. Feedback from others. As I said, when you're a doctor, you get judged by many people. You have to complete a Team Assessment of Behaviour, or TAB form. Basically, you send a request to all the healthcare professionals that you've been working with, doctors, nurses, allied health professionals like physiotherapists and HCAs, and they give feedback on your professionalism, teamwork, communication and reliability. Your clinical supervisor might also assign senior clinicians to be part of your placement supervision group, or PSG, to provide direct feedback on how you've been doing. Step 7. 
quality improvements. You'll be expected to be involved in quality improvements. You can do an audit where you compare the current practices of your department against nationally recognized standards, or you can do a quality improvement project or QUIP, where you have more flexibility than an audit in coming up with creative solutions to problems that don't have easily identifiable standards. Start looking for projects early, but think smart about the project you choose. Is it specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based? In other words, make sure it's doable, completable, and worthwhile, so it's not a massive waste of time for everyone. Step eight, additional achievement. You can also log the following on your ePortfolio. Postgraduate examinations that you've done, certificates from courses or seminars, taste to weeks in a particular specialty, publications or research you've been involved in, extracurricular achievements, leadership and teaching skills, and future career planning. Step nine, linking to the curriculum. There's a set curriculum for what UK junior doctors are expected to achieve each year. These are called Higher Learning Objectives or HLOs and they change slightly each year. Here's a list of the current higher learning objectives. So you have to link everything you've done in your ePortfolio to each of the relevant HLO categories. That's how you demonstrate to the appraisal panel that you've used those opportunities to fulfill your curriculum requirements. You may have to write a paragraph called a summary narrative to justify how your achievements line up with the curriculum requirements. And step 10, the ARCP. At the end of the year, you have your annual appraisal called the ARCP, the Annual Review of Competency Progression. This is a formal assessment where they look through your ePortfolio to check you've ticked all the right boxes and how you've mapped all your documents documentation to the higher learning objectives. If you pass, then you get to progress to the next stage of training. Congratulations! If for some reason you don't pass, they'll tell you what you need to achieve to get there, whether it's getting a few more SLEs or doing an extra clinical rotation to make up for lost time or gain some clinical skills. But most people without special circumstances will pass if they've been consistently updating their portfolio throughout the year. Finally, I wanted to talk about some of the challenges you might face. Finishing everything before the ARCP deadline. Start your portfolio work early. I think that's the main theme here. Contacting your supervisors. Again, contact them early, in person, via email, through their secretaries, however you can manage. If you still have trouble, tell your administrators. Getting enough responses for tabs, PSGs, SLEs, and all the other three letter abbreviations. You rely on feedback from other people. So ask plenty of people, send more than you need, and send them email reminders. Beg and plead if you need to. Not enough evidence to map to each of the higher learning objectives. Don't worry too much about this. For example, you won't have as much to map to the quality improvement section as you do for the clinical assessment section. Just try your best and you should be fine. Not sure about what you have to do? Just ask your administrative team. They're the number one source of help, so don't be afraid to ask for their help. I hope this video has given you an insight into what first year doctors are expected to achieve. You have to complete your ePortfolio and ARCP every year, and it just gets more advanced in terms of the expectations. But believe in yourself, you can do this. Watch this video about my first ever night shift and what I got up to. Like, share, and subscribe, and until next time, stay groovy.